Hi, I'm Tess. And I'm Amina, we're in grade 10. And today we're going to be showing you how to write an eight worthy Criterion B in design. So in the Criterion B there are five sections. There's design specifications, design ideas, of which there are three usually, uh, design selection, design development, and the working plan. For this, we will be using my Criterion B for my practice portfolio, because I got an eight on it. Ugh. She got a seven. The general topic for this unit was about sustainability. For this reason, I chose to make a compost bin. Uh, in Criterion B, the first section is design specifications. Um, it's always in the table, and usually if you're in grade 9 or below, it'll already be in the template, so you don't really have to worry about making it yourself. Uh, there are three sections to it. The first one is the criteria. So these are the criteria you're making yourself. And so basically they're just instructions about what your product has to be, because you don't know exactly what your product looks like yet. So these are things, criteria that your product needs to have that you will test in the future. The trick here is you don't want to know the answer before you test it. Exactly. Um, so they can be very specific, like here, this is a very specific one to start with in Tess's project. It is, my product needs to be able to be cleaned of basic stains, water, socks, grease, in 30 seconds or less. So that's an extremely specific criteria, but you could also have something as general as it needs to have blue in it. So, as an example. Uh, next is the reason column, where you're just explaining why you need this to happen. So why does she need it to be able to clean easily, so it's convenient for her target audience? Or why do you need blue in it? Uh, because it's I did it. convenient to the target audience. <laughs> <laughs> because I took a survey and my target audience likes blue. Something like that. The final column is, how will it be measured? So, in this column, as we said before, you will be explaining how your product will test this criteria or measure this criteria, because like we said, you will be doing that in Criterion D. Um, so here, you just explain what method you're using. So if it was about length, you say, I will measure it with a ruler. If it was about weight, I will weigh it with a balance, things like that. The problem is some of your criteria might not be something as logistical as that. So if you have like, uh, my product needs to have blue in it, that's a bit of a gray area. So you need some of those criteria, but try not to have too many that are like that because it's a bit of a opinionated, opinionated based um, measurer. -er. <laughs> and so you will need to ask for opinions, and opinionated responses aren't as reliable as, say, measuring, so try to have an even amount of both. But, of course you need those, so you can use them as well. And if you have any questions, your teacher will... It's a bit of a teacher-based system. So, the second section in Criterion B is design ideas. The design ideas, there are usually three of them. Some teachers might make you do four. There really isn't a number limit, but we recommend you doing three because that's the minimum. And, and it's a lot of work. <laughs> exactly. So what the design ideas are is that they are three distinct ideas that would be feasibly made into a product once you get to the manufacturing stage. As I mentioned previously, my product is going to be a compost bin. For this reason, I had to make three different compost bins. As you can see here, it's my general idea. And on the sides, I have different zooms of different areas of the idea. For example, if I, I wanted a handle in my, drawer, in my drawers, so I added a little zoom here, plus an annotation as to how this would impact my target audience. This is essential in every design idea you do. You usually need at least three zooms or three different angles on your design idea in order to get an eight. Of course, this is a, I mean, this has to be uh, changed to apply a different idea. So here for compost bin, there's only one big element and then she's zooming on a different aspect to see how she's gonna make it and then annotate it. But say you're doing something more complicated. So in one of mine, I did a uh, women's abuse shelter, like in the last video, if you watched it. And uh, there, it was very big. So I drew the general sketch of a building and then drew close-ups of each floor, for schematics of each floor. So. It's not necessarily a zoom up, but it's just clarification. You can also add a little picture as to what your product would look like when it's in the real world. This isn't always necessary. It really depends on your teacher, like most things. Um, but as you can see here, there's a little compost bin in what would be the school courtyard. If we move on to the next design ideas, you can see how different they are. 
For this one, I had a very different shape. Now, although this looks a bit weird, I knew going in that this wasn't going to be the idea I was going to pick, but I had to have some elements that I might use. For example, the drawer, or the fact that it's made of wood. Um, to match the design specifications. To match the design specifications that we uh, talked about before. You can see pretty much the same format with the, the zoom-ins, Sometimes there's some color annotations, and again, a little picture of what it would look like. Uh, and here's the last design. And finally, this is the design that I felt most confident about going in, and this is the one that I based my design development on. You don't always have to have one idea that you're sure about. Sometimes you can have three that you very much like, sometimes you, have, you can have three that you don't like at all, but we develop them in the next stage, and that's where it gets more important. Uh, so for the third uh, section in Criterion B, it's the selection of the final design. So as I said before, there are three or four designs that you have, and like Tess said, you can go into the plan knowing which idea you want to use, but if not, this will help you determine. So there are different ways of doing the selection of final de design. Uh, some people like to do a paragraph like or a long piece of writing where you do one paragraph for each design explaining what it is and then a final paragraph determining which idea you selected but Tess chose to do it in a table which I mean it's a lot more simple and easier to do so if you want to um, so here's her first design table and here she put each criteria and then she put a sort of way of determining if it met it or not. That way, when she went through each design, she saw which one met her criteria the most, as you can see. And afterwards, she wrote a small paragraph explaining which one met her criteria the most and why she chose it, and maybe just a little more clarification. Now, of course, while I was going through these tables, I hadn't done the test with my product yet because it wasn't built. Um, so I put a little disclaimer saying that I hadn't conducted the test, but this is what I thought they might turn out to be. It was a hypothesis. <laughs> yes, and so if you're in grade eight, even nine, this is probably more than enough. But if you're in grade 10 and you wanna go a step further, or if you're an overachieving grade nine, um, you can do a third section that we see in Tess's e-portfolio, where she has why and why not. So here she has her first design and she puts all her specifications, whether it met it or not, and then explain why or why not. And that just adds some detail that design teachers love. The next stage is the design development. For this, you have to combine all three of your design ideas. It doesn't necessarily have to be all your ideas from all three, but if you take one, at least one element from each, that's what's best. So as we can see in here, I took some ideas from mostly my first and third design idea. I kept the drawers and the air holes, and I kept the fact that it's made out of wood. The format is very similar to the design ideas. As you can see, there's a general idea in the middle, and then some zoom-ins and annotations all around. This will help whoever's grading your, uh, your project to know what you're talking about. And technically, you're not supposed to know your development before you do it, but if you go into your design ideas with the general idea that you want to, uh, so that you like, make some things less good so that you can develop them in the design development, it might make your life easier. For the working plans, we're going to be using my e-portfolio from grade 10. What happened with the practice e-portfolio is that we were on a time crunch, so we didn't have to do it. Either way. For the working plans here, I chose to make a sort of therapy room to help my target audience get over their mental health issues. So, as she said, the fourth part of Criterion B is the working plan, and in my opinion, the most strong. Uh, so in the working plan, you've already determined what idea you have, you're using, and then you've developed it. So here you're saying exactly how you're going to make it. Um, so about the working plan, is the working plan is almost always to scale, unless you're making something big in which case scale it down, but you have to make sure that everything is measured to how it's going to be in real life or, you know, to scale. Um, for example, um, since this is a room, I obviously wasn't going to build a room. Uh, I wrote the scale up here. It's 1 to 20, meaning 1 centimeter on this equals 20 in real life. So 
in not only do you have to make draw your product to scale, you also have to add things like measurements and colors because you have don't necessarily have to put colors in your design ideas. So you can add you don't have to color it, but like here she put annotations where she said gray or gray <laughs> or black. She has a right. Um, and then otherwise, you also have to say how it's going to be made material-wise and uh, process. So she's going to say whether she used the saw, how she measured it, things like that. If you're an overachiever, um, you can also put either the Pantone color or the hex, especially if you're working digitally. This is one of the most important things. The Apple Mac is actually named after the Apple's Macintosh. Did you know that the first VCR was the size of a piano? Spam Mail was actually named after Spam Can Meat because the creators thought it was that disgusting. Samsung is one month older than Apple. <laughs> the word robot actually has dark origins. It originally came from the Czech word for robota, which means for slave. 